kind mm -hmm. enough to join us for today's big interview. And, and Kelsey, we'll get to you and your career in a moment because obviously it's been absolutely fascinating. But I just want to get a sense from you. Like, what, what were you thinking last night as, as you saw Caitlin pass you on the all-time list? Uh, well, thanks for having me, Big Ten. Um, I think, honestly, I wasn't surprised. Uh, I, I know how great she is. I know how amazing she is. And um, I know the work she's put in to kind of be where she is. And um, scoring a lot of points like that is tough. Um, I know a little bit from experience, <laughs> but at the level she's playing, it's, it's an amazing accomplishment. I'm proud of her. Northwestern sold out that game last night. And that's the first time they'd ever sold out a women's game in the history of the program. The get-in price at Evanston was about $250. I mean, you just think about the effect that Caitlin has had. Like, give me a sense of what this has meant, in your opinion, kind of more broadly for women's basketball. Oh, I think it's, I think it's a great opportunity for her to be a pillar of what our game is, you know, going to be um, and where it's going. Um, she's a phenomenal person you know, on the court. And I think she's paving a way for, you know, the future generations behind us. And she's actually putting on notice what the game could be for a lot of people if they just allow it. So it's a good thing to see. It is indeed. What stands out to you the most about her game? Uh, she can shoot the ball, man. She can shoot that ball. And I think, um, I think consciously, like, she has no conscience. And I think that's the best <laughs> part about it. Uh, she, she's playing um, based on what she sees and, you know, She's comfortable, and I think it's a really good thing to have um, at this level, you know, in, in the game. Like, you know, you can be able to shoot the ball from anywhere on the floor, and that's that's, that's rare to find. So she has something rare in her. I want to catch up on your career. Uh, as I mentioned, obviously a brilliant, brilliant player at Ohio State. And we saw the numbers up until last night. Second all-time leading scorer in the history of the sport. The all-time leading scorer in the Big Ten before last night. So you're playing for the Indiana Fever. You are a WNBA All-Star for the first time this year. What did that mean to you? Oh, man, it was uh, it, it was one of those things where uh, after a while, you know, the accomplishments were always what they were and what they always will be for me. But I think personally it was, a, you know, it's something that you any great player wants to mark up their list if they're playing against the best, you know, 143 players in the world. And um, to have that accomplishment now on my belt, I'm grateful for it. But um, I think there's a lot of more work to be done and I'm going to be able to do it. Well, let's talk a little bit about the work for your team. It has been a struggle for the fever yeah. of late. Certainly, we're, we're well aware of that, people who follow the WNBA. And yet, it felt like last year there was a lot of progress being made. You got another really good player on the roster in Aaliyah Boston. Kind of catch us up on where the fever is and the progress you feel like this team is making. Um, I think we made a lot of great strides, especially this past year, um, with having people, having people like Aaliyah Boston and even Alyssa Smith and just our young group and Grace Berger, um, who's also a big team athlete who's yes. you know, put the game on notice. I think it gives us a chance to kind of be young and be vibrant, but also show people how fast we can play. And I think our style of play can be different going forward with the people. How do you compare playing in the WNBA to playing in college? Um, I would say that I think that once you hit a professional role, you, you, you have to find what's, what's good for you personally um, in college. You have, you have a routine. They kind of put you on schedule, you know, of what you're going to do, where you got to be. And I think as a pro, you just learn to, like, what's good for you and what your body needs and what your mind needs. And I think the more and more you get that experience, it helps. So I think that's the big difference. You were telling me right now you're on your way to training, and that's part yeah. of what you're talking about there, right, is kind of, hey, it's on you. It's on you to work on, on your game. Yeah. Take people through your offseason. Like, what's a typical offseason routine for you? Uh, well, my first couple years, I was overseas, um, six and seven months, and it was okay to get that experience under my belt. But after a while, it kind of got like, in a way, I didn't, I didn't like how I felt being, you know, away from my family for so many months at a time. Uh, considering that we don't get a lot of time as a woman athlete, especially on the basketball side. Um, so um, this past couple seasons, I played at Athletes Unlimited, uh, which is a new um, kind of like a pro am that they have for um, basketball players before the WNBA starts. So. That's been something I've been doing the last two years to prepare myself in the offseason. But I spent a lot, a lot of time with my dad at Wilberforce University. Um, he's the head basketball coach at the HBCU. So I spent a lot of time down there just kind of like working with him and staying sharp and getting reps with his kids and his team during the season. So I get the best of both worlds, I think. Uh, in addition to training, you do such amazing work in the community. You won the Don Staley Community <laughs> Leadership Award. 
given to the WNBA player who makes the most impact in the town in which they live and work. Tell us a, a little bit about the Kells Hoop Foundation and, and what you've done, particularly for young people. Oh, wow, man. We made a lot of strides. Our most recent success was the toy drive. Uh, it was our third annual toy drive where uh, we go throughout the city giving toys back to different, whether it be parenthood foundations, um, indoor kids that just genuinely don't have a good Christmas typically. And, and we make it our job to make sure that they have a good Christmas. Um, as well as we do back to school drives, we do turkey drives. Uh, we have Christmas parties for the kids. Uh, we kind of like an all around book, um, you know, universal. And I think we, we do a good job of trying to get back to the future because we know that's what our society needs. We got to pour into them first. Well, that is wonderful. I'm going to ask you uh, a question about the present before I, I let you go. But but wonderful that you're impacting the future. How much have you watched Ohio State this year? Because, you know, we talk a lot about Caitlin Clark and Iowa's phenomenal and Indiana is really good as well. But man, you know, Ohio State is right there, including taking down Iowa. Give us a sense of what you've seen for the Buckeyes. Uh, I think we have a flying under the radar type uh, Buckeye team this year. Um, I think J.C. Sheldon um, and those guards do a really good job of playing hard on both ends, um, um, especially when it comes down in the crunch time and playing great players like Kaylin Clark. I think Ohio State responds in those moments. Um, they did a really good job last year in the tournament as well. So I expect great things, but um, I always tell them when I talk to them, just keep it simple. And I think they're doing a really great job of that. Uh, Kelsey Mitchell, a real pleasure to catch up with you. Congratulations, not just on your great work on the court, but off of it as well. Have a great workout, and thanks for spending a few minutes with us. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good one. Uh, you too. Be good.